Everybody knows that 2020 was a pretty tough year, but to add to that, there are rumblings now that data scientist is no longer the number one job in America. So let's sit down and talk about what exactly is the state of the data science job market in the year 2021. Hello again guys and welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Richard and this is Richard on Data, the channel where I help you break into data science and grow your skills in the field. So Glassdoor did a survey recently and it looks like data scientist has indeed fallen from the number one spot based on factors like median base salary, job satisfaction, and job openings. It's sitting at number two behind Java developer. And I get questions on here all the time about whether or not it makes sense to get into the field now, given general fears about it and data analytics in general getting automated in the future. So in this video, there's a few different things that I'm gonna try to break down for you. Number one is what the overall demand out there is looking like for data scientists. Number two is a little bit more difficult to pin down, but we're gonna try to look at what the overall supply of data scientists out there is expected to look like with the general understanding that as long as demand for data scientists exceeds supply, you're going to have an easier time getting a job and your salary is gonna be higher. I'm gonna talk about trends that I expect that we're going to see in the recovering years following 2020, and then we're gonna close with pretty much the most fun topic imaginable, which is, of course, salaries. But before I do that, take a moment to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, hit the notification bell so you never miss an update, and then smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. And then if you guys would be willing to support my channel, I will have links in the description of this video to my PayPal account, as well as to crypto wallet addresses. Your support is highly appreciated. All right, so let's start with the demand side of the equation. And I will say, overall, it looks pretty healthy, though there are some slightly conflicting reports. To start with, this is from a report that was done by DICE following Q2 of 2020, but they found that the demand for data scientists in 2020 increased by an average of 50% across healthcare, telecommunications, media and entertainment, and the banking, financial services, and insurance sectors. Now, I'm not necessarily familiar with the ins and outs of all of those different industries, but I know for sure that we're in a world where healthcare is going increasingly digital, and that last year, telecom absolutely boomed. All of that to say is that if an industry is growing as a whole, there's a pretty good chance that data science is going to flourish there. But there's more in the way of good news. Now, not all of these statistics were necessarily up to date following the full impacts of the pandemic, but there is some seriously good speculation from reputable sources. So a report from the Royal Society, that's an independent scientific academy of the UK and the Commonwealth, said that the demand for workers with data skills grew by 231% over the past five years. Then IBM projected that globally, around 28% of the total jobs in 2021 would be data science jobs. And the US Bureau of Labor Statistics believes these jobs will grow by at least 19% by 2026. So that's all very good stuff. Even the fact that there's this much hype and positive speculation going on can lead to organizations feeling left out or like they'd miss the boat if they're not getting into data science. This in turn is going to lead to the creation of more jobs, even if with some of those jobs, you might have to be kind of careful because they're not necessarily the most desirable types of data science jobs. However, I would be doing a disservice to all of you if I communicated that everything everywhere was all sunshine and roses. Jay Fang, that's a Silicon Valley data scientist who runs the YouTube channel Data Science J, as well as the interview prep newsletter Interview Query, did some research into this, and the picture that he found was a little bit different. 
He looked at over 10,000 data science related interview experiences, and he found that growth in data science interviews actually slowed down in 2020 at a 10% growth rate compared to a previous growth rate closer to 80%. That's not true necessarily of FANG companies though, and it's not true of data engineering either, where there was a 40% increase. So to be fair, he still found that data science interviews and jobs in general were experiencing growth, but at the same time, this seems like a much different story from some of the other stats out there. So how do we reconcile these things? I don't know this for sure, but I do think there's a little bit of a tech focus with the sample he was working with. So this might not necessarily speak to what's going on in other sectors in things like healthcare or the financial services industry. There's also some maturation happening, both in and outside of tech, where they either have a bigger push towards data or machine learning engineering, or they just call the same sort of thing something different altogether, such as research scientist. We can see the growth there, though, still looks very impressive. That's always something you have to take into account with these types of analyses, because some people stratify it a lot further and they look at all the various different types of data jobs, whereas some people just focus on jobs with the title data scientist. And it's certainly also possible in the short term that companies had to take a bit more of a defensive posture, whereas before they might have been more eager to invest in data science. Last year, maybe there was more fiscal uncertainty, so a little bit less hiring. Though again, that is more of a short term rather than a long term sort of dynamic. All in all though, we live in an era where last year even, the top tech companies experienced massive growth in their market capitalization, and there's nothing from a long-term fundamental sense that I can find out there that's super scary. Demand for data science overall looks extremely healthy to me, and while there's no question that yes, it is going to undergo some changes in the near term, the job market for it I think is going to continue to grow. But obviously, it's not enough just to talk about the demand side, we need to talk about the supply side too. That is, how many people out there are trying to get into data science? Besides probably you, based on the fact that you're watching this video. So for this, I think one of the best first places to look is the number of degree programs out there from universities, because it is well known that most data scientists have college degrees. And according to datascienceprograms.org, there are more than 830 separate data science programs out there being offered from around 500 universities around the world. So first of all, unfortunately, I couldn't find any charting out there on how much exactly this has grown over the last few years, but I do think it's fair to assume more universities out there are catching on to the fact that there's more demand for data science out in industry, and they're going to accommodate by creating more and more types of data science programs. Plus, let's just put this into perspective. It may seem like a lot that there are 500 universities out there offering data science programs, but keep in mind that there are 25,000 universities or so around the world. So this is only somewhere around 2% of universities. And yes, I understand it's possible to become a data scientist with a degree like CS or statistics like I did. In fact, it's possible to become a data scientist with no college degree whatsoever. But I do hope this helps ground you in the fact it's very difficult for a supply of data scientists to keep up with the growing demand. I couldn't find statistic up to date following the impacts of the pandemic, but at least as of early last year, data science jobs were staying open five days longer on average compared to other jobs, meaning they were harder to fill with fewer qualified people out there. Alright, so now that we've covered the actual market supply and demand side of things, let's talk about trends that we can probably expect to see in 2021 and in future years. Now there's a wonderful blog article in KD Nuggets that I think did a great job of breaking some of the most important things down. So they list four different things here, and I think all of these make a lot of sense. First thing they list is the rise of decision intelligence, which in this context basically means artificial intelligence. 
This is the trend most people are familiar with, and although it's only a piece of the big puzzle that is data science, there's no question AI and machine learning are huge and they're only gonna grow. Next is data stories. Now they make a distinction between these and dashboards, framing these as stories that take the viewers on a journey of the data and easily explain all of the conclusions that are available from the analysis, adding that the users don't need any detailed technical knowledge to understand these stories. Now, speaking personally on this one, I've seen these before in the data science context, but not nearly enough. So this one actually kind of surprised me. Next trend is the increase of cloud services. And there's no question that over the last year, a number of organizations developed their cloud infrastructure. So yeah, there's also no question this is going to represent an increasingly important domain and skill set for data scientists in the future. And then lastly, there's branching of data analytics. Specifically, they mention audio, video, text, customer feedback style data, just to give some examples. A lot of newer people tend to think of data as this structured sort of thing, where you have tables with rows and columns, but it doesn't always start that way. You have all this unstructured stuff in the universe out there, which is super useful too. Obviously, particularly if you're just breaking into data science for the first time, there's no way you can be reasonably expected to have expertise in all of this stuff. But even knowing that some of these things represent emerging trends can set you apart from others and help you have the right types of conversations. If I were to try to summarize these things as succinctly as possible, again, based on that article, as well as my own anecdotal experience, it would be to speculate that large unstructured data is going to play an increasingly important role in the future. For that reason and for others, things like natural language processing and cloud technologies are going to become increasingly important components of a data science background as well. And then as far as machine learning and AI, those are no fad either. Now let's close this video on a fun note, which is by, of course, talking about money. And obviously salaries are pretty challenging to provide a concise story about because they vary so much by years of experience and geographical location. One surprisingly good resource for understanding data science salaries out there is actually the salary mega thread on the data science subreddit. Obviously, this is far from any kind of scientific sampling, but you see people on here from different countries, different regions of the United States, different levels of experience, and even variations on job title. But as we saw at the beginning of this video from Glassdoor, here in the United States anyway, the average salary for a data scientist role is 113736 and that's not taking into account things like title changes. So for instance, say if you get promoted from a data scientist to a senior data scientist, you're going to be swimming in the big bucks even more. Obviously, this whole discussion we've been having in this video about supply and demand affects prices extensively, because if there is a high demand for something for which there is a limited supply, the price of that thing, aka your salary, must go up. Based on all available evidence, demand is going to significantly outpace supply, at least in the near term. So at this point anyway, I think the future for salaries looks absolutely fantastic. So overall, just to summarize everything that we've talked about here, I really do think the trend is your friend until the end when it bends. Data science will definitely not look the same a few years from now, especially as emerging trends mature and platforms like AutoML become more mainstream, which is going to allow data scientists to do more, better, different things. I'll put out a video soon on the trends surrounding data engineering, and I also did a video around a year ago where I discussed the notion of data science becoming automated and why I think that's overblown. I'll have a link to that in the description. But overall, data science has been in an amazing trend for years, and yes, 2020 was a pretty rough year, but I don't see it as being bad enough to where it's fundamentally going to change that trend. Data science remains lucrative, and as economies around the world grow and continue to open up in the coming years, I think it's only going to become even more lucrative. 
So thanks for watching this video. Tell me in the comments what you think. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? Then also smash the like button, and I'll see you all in the not-so-distant future. Until then, Richard, on data.